Okay, so this is a middle-aged gentleman treated for prostate cancer in whom on a follow-up CT they, have, they seem to have found a small pancreatic body lesion suspicious for a neuroendocrine tumor. Vous avez senti le truc dans la bouche? Voilà, respirez bien. Et ça. Continuez bien respirer. Voilà. Ok, penchez la tête vers l'avant un petit peu. Avalez juste un petit coup. Encore un petit coup. Voilà. Essayez d'avaler encore. Penchez la tête vers l'avant. Il faut essayer d'avaler. Vraiment faire le mouvement pour avaler. C'est ça. On va essayer dans l'autre côté. Voilà. Non, non. Essayez d'avaler encore un petit coup. Voilà. OK, merci. Essayez de dormir maintenant si possible. OK, so we're going to go to the body right away. There's his liver. Liver there. Okay, portal vein right there, torquing. Again, just with the left arm, there's the portal vein. And uh, I don't know if that's his, uh, that's not his bonda. That's be a large bonda because that's his, can't be that believe His bonda is right in there, it's very small. But here's the genu of the pancreas right here, going out to the tail. There we go, there we go, there we go. I'm not seeing anything so far. And I don't, I just, I, I don't look at the CT first, I just see if I can find it myself. Oh, there it is. And that's a typical neuroendocrine tumor. Uh, now, the thing about this is, you know, I could biopsy this, but there is a small risk of tumor seeding. But if this is a new lesion, regardless, it has to come out. So I'm inclined to just not really biopsy this and say it's a typical neuroendocrine tumor, but I know our surgeons tend to want to have the, the biopsy. So I'll, I'll do one pass. I'll put the grill at 25. I do one pass, and and I'll put it in a in a because it could be focal pancreatitis, for example. I'll, I think it's unlikely, but it. Um, huh? Uh, you can do the Doppler. Ça change rien pour moi. So um, he's asking if I do the Doppler for this, and I, you know, uh, we can put the power Doppler on. But whether it's, say it lights up, it could still be neuroendocrine or focal pancreatitis. And if you want, we can put it on for the fun of it. What uh, makes you think, what makes you think that this is neuroendocrine? This is a typically what a neuroendocrine tumor looks like. This is exactly what they look like. It's a well demarcated, isolated, rounded lesion. There's nothing there. It's just a typical, typical, it's exactly what they look like. Okay, put the needle in here. Also, just take a quick look and make sure he doesn't have liver mets or something, which would be very unusual for such a small lesion. Just before you do the primary, just make sure there's nothing else going on. Okay, well, that looks okay to me. Okay, okay, so back to the lesion here. Okay. Okay, so let's get the needle going in here. Okay, so again, 25 gauge needle, in we go. And then what I'll do, as I say, is I'll come out of the lesion, but stay in the pancreas and go somewhere else. But I don't want to be too aggressive here. You know, I, 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 uh, it'd be nice to have a diagnosis, but the bottom line is I think in this gentleman, it's, this is gonna have to come out. We put it just in the cell block because they have to do the amino uh, staining uh, for, to look for the neuroendocrine tumor. So I don't call the cytologist because I'm only going to do one pass anyway. And I'm going to put it all in the cell block. And obviously you also don't want to go through this and into the vessel that's right behind it. So, you know, doing the FNA here is not without risks. And I, and I, and I don't want to give them pancreatitis which uh, would, you know, delay any surgery also. So I think that's about as much as I'm going to do, and that's it. Okay, and then we'll just take a quick look at uh, 
the head of his pancreas, make sure there isn't a satellite lesion or a synchronous lesion into the bowel. Okay, so there's his uh, portal vein, I am assuming right there, torquing right, and then there's a very small bowel duct right there, down, down, down to the papilla. He does have a cyst in the head of his pancreas. I don't know if they saw that on the CT, but he has a simple cyst right here. Okay. Right there, and we'll go underneath into D2, shortening up, tip max up, coming back. Okay, so here's the unsnit process right here. Nothing there. Okay. Coming back, looking for the ducts coming out of the pillow. So I see it gets a little dark here. That's where the ducts are going to be. Right there, there's the PD coming out. And then there's this cystic lesion. So it looks like he has an IPMN in the unsnit here, because it looks like it's communicating with the with the duct there. So he just uh, just to complicate the situation, he's got a, like a really, this, see this sort of tortuous kind of, you can imagine it's sort of a side branch full of mucus and stuff. So he's got a side branch IPMN as well. Okay, so for the surgeons, that's sort of interesting, I think. And that's about it. Okay, so uh, I, I don't, um, I, I don't see any need to needle this IPMN. I think other people might do that. I don't think it's going to change management. It's a typical IPMN. And the management of IPMNs doesn't depend on the FNA. It depends on the appearance. So there's really no need to needle this. If, if at some point you have a doubt whether it's really mucin, maybe, but at this size anyway, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to follow this. So there's really, to my mind, no need to, uh, to do any type of FNA here.